Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm in a beautiful little street with some beautiful ivy in the background. It's a very European vibe for this European Mediterranean video. I hope you can also hear the birds chirping in the background. If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Rachel and I'm from Texas but I've been living in Spain for the past almost five years which just blows my mind. I never expected to be here for this long and, and I don't really have plans of leaving anytime soon. Soon. So yeah, in this channel, I just want to share my experiences with you guys and even some tips that you can take wherever you live if you live in the US. I think these can be super useful to just, to just be happier, live a longer life. So today we're going to be talking about six things I've learned here on how to live a more Mediterranean or European lifestyle. I live in Spain, which has one of the highest life expectancies in the world. I think it's about five years more than in the US. I think the US is around 78 or so, and here I think it's 83. I'm gonna put the statistics here just to make sure. Okay, so it's actually much worse than I thought. In 2021, the life expectancy in the US went down to its lowest level since 1996. So life expectancy for men was 73.2 years and 79.1 for women in 2021, with an average of 76.1. This isn't just because of the pandemic, because in Spain, life expectancy actually saw an increase in 2021 and was 85.8 for women and 80.2 for men with an average of 83.3. This is a difference of 7.2 years. People live seven years longer in Spain. But basically people live a really long, happy life here because of the lifestyle. So if you wanna live a long, happy life as well, here are my tips. Tip number one, take vacation. I repeat take vacation here in almost all of europe in the month of august the entire continent takes vacation and they take a long vacation okay i know that in the u.s this might be a little bit harder because you probably can't take a month off or can you i think that a lot of people in the u.s have a lot of vacation time or sometimes even have like unlimited vacation but they don't take it why because they're scared to make their boss upset i really don't know actually the the number one reason so if you guys have a reason why you don't take vacation tell me in the comments because i actually really want to know because i think this is the number one thing in europe that makes people so happy and healthy is taking vacation days and not just putting it off for the future they'll take off two weeks and they'll go to wherever and they are off the grid it's something normal here and i know that it's going to be a process to change this mentality in the u.s but the mental Mental health here versus the mental health in the US like having lived in both places I see a huge difference in mental health huge 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 so yeah take your vacation stop putting it off stop putting off that Europe trip to who knows when if if you don't do it now when are you gonna do it if not now when if you have the vacation days and the money what are you waiting for take your vacation be proud of your vacation work hard so that you feel that you deserve that vacation because you do and take it take your vacation you deserve it you you earned it you worked for it take it okay the second tip i have to live a more mediterranean lifestyle is do not eat while in any moving situation don't eat while driving don't eat while walking and do not eat while working. Treat eating as a sacred moment of your day where you sit down and you enjoy a meal. It's so much more important than it sounds to sit down and allow yourself to eat your food and only be focused on that. You can be with people, you don't have to be alone. It's even better if you're with people. Just sit down, enjoy a meal. Do not eat on the go because this is not good. People here do not eat while moving. I don't see anyone eating while walking on the streets like and i've done it before and i feel very uncomfortable because i feel that it's just wrong and people look at me and i don't see anyone eating in their car i don't even see people drinking in their car or walking like to go coffee is just slowly but surely becoming a thing here i've lived here for five years and i've seen the difference between five years ago and now and there is more to go coffee now than there used to be but it's still like not really a thing 
thing. They really value sitting down, enjoying things because those moments are gonna decrease your stress, they're gonna bring you to the present, and I promise you it will add years to your life if you take these moments every single day. Every once in a while, you are really, really busy and you have to get something done, so you kinda have to skip lunch. Okay, I understand that, that happens, but every day for your entire career. Okay, the third tip that I have is to do things on the weekdays. I feel that in the US, the, there's like the work week and school week and the weekend. It's like a huge barrier in between these two things and a lot of people just live their work weeks to make it to the weekend. They're just waiting and waiting and waiting for the weekend. They're like, please let the weekend come faster. I'm dying, I hate everything. I just wanna get to the weekend. If you live your entire life like this, you will have missed most of your life. Five days a week working, two days off. You just wished away the majority of your life waiting for the weekends. So what should you do? Do things on the weekdays. The weekdays are days as well. They're days that you're on this earth that we're lucky to be alive. So we need to take advantage of them. I know that the easy thing to do would be to rush home from work, maybe pick up to go food, go home, sit on your couch, watch TV and stay home for the rest of the night. And you think that that's what's gonna relax you and give you energy for the next day. I'm here to tell you that is probably not going to have the effect that you that you think it will. If you have a really stressful job and so you think that going home and watching TV, watching the news, eating fast food and all those things are like comforts, they're really not. They're really not gonna give you that comfort that you are looking for. Going out and doing things during the week is gonna give you that release of stress. Here on any weekday, you can find the streets full of young people, middle-aged people, older people after work, just everyone is out enjoying because they need that. I want to do a video on this, but they need that third place. So I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but you have your home, which is your first place, your workplace, which is your second place. And then you need your third place, which is where you just unwind and you connect with other people. And it just, it's so healthy for you. It is so, so good for you to have those social interactions that you don't have at home or at work. Whether that be something physical like yoga or a sport, sports team like rec sports, like a book club, an art class, that's my personal favorite is watercolor classes, or going to have a drink, or going to have a little something to eat. Obviously, it's important to get your sleep, but if there's one night where you stay up a little bit later to go hang out with some friends or go do something during the week, I promise you, you're gonna be okay. Here, people barely sleep. <laughs> Here, people are not just focused on getting their eight hours of sleep every single night, getting all their chores done. They're focused on living, living in the present moment, seeing people throughout the week, having new experiences every single week to just make you feel alive. So obviously routines are great and going to bed early is great, but also give yourself a couple days during the week where you go do something after work. And then you can still go home and go to bed early, but maybe some nights it'll be a little bit later and some nights it won't, but just don't be afraid to get yourself out of that work week mindset because the work days are also days where you're on this earth and you need to cherish those days as well and not just wait for the weekend. Okay, tip number Number four, stop buying things you don't need. This is like so hard for me when I go back to the US because it's just so easy to buy things. The culture in the US is just to buy so, so, so many things. And, and while I do think it's good to use the money that you work so hard for to buy things that you enjoy, whether that be things or experiences, kind of up to you. I recommend experiences, but like there's, there's gotta be a limit. There's gotta be a limit. We cannot go crazy buying so many things we don't need and every time we go on Amazon spend $200 have packages coming every single day you don't need it you don't need it and the reason I say this is because sometimes we work so hard to have the income that we desire but then why do we strive for that income if we just spend it on things we don't need and really don't even want? Why do we do this? Here, the culture is not so much consumerist, like, let me just buy everything and like, oh, what is that new thing that my friend has? Like, oh, I'm gonna buy that too. It's really not like that here. And it takes the pressure off needing to make so much money because you realize you don't need to buy 
all these things why are you working so hard towards a salary that you just are blowing on random things like if you have something in mind that you want a trip or a house or a car or something that you like have in mind like, okay this costs this amount of money I need a job that's gonna give me this much money because this is what I really want to do with that money I don't think that's the way most of us see money and income we just strive to make as much as possible so if you're gonna work so hard for that money Money. work just as hard in deciding how you want to invest that money that money that time that energy that stress you have to reinvest it in something that's gonna actually make you grow and that's probably not gonna be your $500 target trip unfortunately <laughs> okay tip number five I think that one thing here that everyone does that really does affect their life whether they know it or not, is dressing nice. So when I was in college in the US, we all just wore extra large t-shirts, Nike shorts, and tennis shoes. It was just the minimum effort in your physical appearance. And it's very weird because here, people dress really nice. Like you will not see people in a t-shirt or in leggings. That's only for going to the gym, but there are even some people who do not wear that on the street. Like they'll wear normal clothes to the gym and then they'll change in the locker rooms and they will also leave in their normal outfit. That to me is like a little bit too much. I walk to the gym in my gym clothes here. The way that it affects you subconsciously even dressing nice is so underrated in the u.s and it's not coming from like a superficial place because here people really aren't like trying to be like the best looking or anything they just wear clothes that fit them well they're nice they're from zara or h&m they're not even like expensive clothes it's just something nice you feel put together you have your hair somewhat nice they don't wear a lot of makeup here um they just look put together and you can see that that reflects in the way that they are it just really affects your day i think the days that i don't get ready because i work from home i really just don't ever get into that mood of like okay today is a work day we're going for it we're gonna get a lot done i feel confident like if i just like wear my big t-shirt and like pajama pants all day i really just don't I don't feel good about myself. Like here, I even have to get ready to go to the grocery store. Like I can't go out in my t-shirt and like leggings. I have to like, okay, let me put on some pants. Let me put on like a decent shirt. Let me pull my hair up. And those moments are like self-love moments. Like, okay, I'm worth this moment. And you're probably thinking like, why do I need to look good to go to the grocery store? I'm not gonna see anyone there. It doesn't matter. But it's not about that. It's about investing that time into yourself and giving yourself the self-love and self-care that you deserve and when you do that with your physical appearance it also goes back into your physical health maybe your diet exercise you want to give yourself that time and that energy to prepare a nice meal to sit down and have a nice meal to take the time to exercise or go on a walk it's like a domino effect once you start to do one i think all of the others kind of fall into place okay tip number six i love this one is to learn another language obviously this is not something that happens overnight this is a long process but it's a beautiful process that can open a lot of doors that you would have never imagined um, i'm here living in spain making YouTube videos in Spanish now I'm making them in English as well but um, I never thought that that would be my job I never thought that I would be on a Spanish reality show that is a story for another day um <laughs> the people that I've met the stories that I've heard all of these things have come from learning another language and it's something that is highly highly valued here in Europe it is completely normal to meet someone that knows three languages that's not like a crazy like oh my gosh you know three languages i'm pretty sure like half the people i know know at least three and they definitely know two and not everyone speaks completely fluent in two languages but pretty much everyone is trying to learn that second language it's a bit frowned upon here i would say if you only know the language of your country and your region of where you were born it's kind of like a sign of being like uncultured a little bit um but in the u.s it's completely normal and and obviously like we don't have to learn another language there because the whole country speaks english and there's no need to learn it but i think it's also good to do things 
not just because we need to do it, but because it will enrich our lives in some way. Like that's just another example of in the US, like my mindset was like, if this isn't gonna make me money, like why am I gonna do it? Like if learning Spanish is not gonna bring me like financial gain in like career opportunities and stuff like that, like why would I do it? And now after living here, I realize like, oh, there's like other things that are valuable apart from financial value. <laughs> so I recommend you try to learn another language. It can be any language and don't think like, how is this gonna benefit my career? Like, like we can do things that don't have to do with our career. Doesn't have to do with your career. Okay, tip number seven. This is probably another one of the most important. These are all important, but this one is for me personally, very, very important. You need to make all of the foods that you possibly can from scratch. This is so hard for us living in the US because we have so much food that's already prepared, pre-prepared, whether you realize that or not, like it is pre-prepared. And it's to the point where we don't even realize that almost all the food we eat is processed. A perfect example for me is like spaghetti sauce. The spaghetti sauce that you buy in the store in the US is full of sugar, additives, just so many ingredients that are completely unnecessary and not good at all for your health. Just buy a can of tomato sauce, add olive oil, oregano, garlic, salt, pepper, and a tiny bit of sugar and you're good. It's gonna have just as good of a flavor and for me way better, way more natural and fresh and you're gonna live longer. It's just better for your health. Just try to make everything from scratch. Even things that you think are unhealthy like cake or cookies, don't buy them already pre-made in a box that has so many things in it that you don't need for cookies or cake that's gonna make it much more unhealthy. Much higher in sugar, calories, fat, trans fat, just all these things you do not need. So if you're having a craving for cake or cookies or brownies or something, make it from scratch. Is it harder? Yes. But that is time that you're investing into yourself, just like we were talking about earlier, and investing into your health. And I promise you that it's worth it. I promise you. So make everything you can from scratch. I've recently been making pita bread from scratch. It's the easiest thing in the entire world. It's flour, yeast, water, and salt. That's it. That's it. And tortillas. Why are we buying tortillas? Stop buying tortillas. Make your own tortillas. Like, come on. It's so easy. It's so easy. And it'll take you, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. And those 20 minutes will add 20 minutes to your life. I cannot scientifically prove that, but I just know that eating non-processed foods from scratch, it's what they do here. And you can just tell in the health of the older people here that that time invested in their food has really, 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 really been worth it because they're in great health, they're happy, they're active. It's just amazing. So take that time make your spaghetti sauce, make your tortillas, like just do not skip out on investing in your health. It is so, so, so important. Well guys, those are my seven tips on how to live more European, more Mediterranean. I'm sure I'll make a lot of videos on this topic because it's something I'm really, really, really passionate about and you can apply these tips anywhere in any country that you live in. If you like this video, let me know in the comments because I want to know if this is useful information. And so yeah, give it a like, comment, subscribe if you like these kinds of videos so that I know to keep doing this. I'll see y'all in the next one. Adios.